communication techniques was adopted. And that was signed in 77, and then what does it say here? In 79, it was ratified by the president. And so the point here is, is they were able to, for military purposes, they never really ex excluded it from being used for non-hostile, non-military purposes. So what you have now is it being used by universities and the Department of Energy and all that, and they're doing, quote, research. And what we're going to talk about when we get later into the show, probably in the next hour, is how this is going to be used in military, how the military is going to be able to adopt this technology and what they're doing right now with the, the reason for cloud seeding and chemtrailing and modifying the weather is they're saying it's to fight global warming and reduce CO2. But, uh, you know, I don't really buy that because I don't buy the global warming theory. So I, what I believe is that they're just using global warming as a way to press forward this, mili this military goal of dominating the weather and the skies and making it into a, a, uh, a weapon, really. There's two ways that you can modify the weather currently. One of them that has been done for a long time has been, it's called cloud seeding. And, I mean, this has been around for a while. And the def and if you want to know what cloud seeding is, because people talk about chemtrails, well, you can say cloud seeding. Uh, it is a form of weather modification, and it's the attempt to change the amount of or type or precipitation that falls from clouds. And this is by dispersing substances into the air that serve as cloud condensation or ice nuclei, that's what they call it, uh, that alter the process with processes within a cloud. The usual intent is to increase rain or snow, but hail and fog suppression are also widely used. It says the most common chemicals used for cloud seeding include silver iodide and dry ice. It says the seeding of clouds requires that the certain super cool liquid water, that is liquid water colder than zero degrees Celsius, and the introduction of a substance such as silver iodide, which has crystalline structure similar to that of ice, will induce freezing nucleation. Cloud seeding chemicals can be dispersed by an aircraft as in uh, or by dispersion dispersion of uh, devices located on the ground so there are different ways of doing it and you know another way of doing it he says uh, is the anti-aircraft guns and rockets and that's what the Chinese use it says referring to the 1903 1915 1919 44 1947 weather modification experiments so this is how long they've been doing it since as there's been planes in the sky. Uh, the Australian Federation of Meteorology discounted, quote, rain-making cloud seeding, and uh, it has been shown to be effective in altering cloud structure and size. Um, this is one of the more recent cloud seedings that were used. And they call it cloud seeding, but, you know, we can call it chemtrailing if we want, just for... Um, so everybody understands this. But uh, it was in the 2000... Eight summer Olympics in Beijing and this was definitely in the news you know there's an article here China plans to halt rain for the Olympics weather modification team will manipulate the clouds in the summer to try to open the the uh, try to keep the open air stadium dry that was from the LA Times um, last year I'm sorry in uh, 2008 of January so a few uh, parts of this article here because this is, I mean, this is just what drives people nuts is that you see the stuff in the skies and then they come out with articles in China and Russia about how they're going to stop the rain or they're going to create rain and they're going to, they're going to, they're going to uh, promise, the mayor in Russia says they're going to promise no snow in, in Russia, in Moscow. And then you're like, well, wait a minute, I thought there was no such thing as, as, as chemtrails or weather modification. But that's the key here is the, uh, is to remember that term weather modification because if you know that then you understand the process of of what these chemtrails really are because the silver iodide is the one thing that we do know that that these chemtrails do uh, contain but uh, I'm just uh, I'm gonna finish up a few here and I want to get uh, our guest comments but uh, this story says yet it is yet another uh, attempt by 
nature, determined not to let anything spoil the party, organizers of the 2008 Summer Olympics said Wednesday that they will take control of the most unpredictable, unpredictable element of all, the weather. It says the Chinese are among the world's leaders in what is called weather modification, but they have more experience creating rain than preventing it. In fact, the techniques are virtually the same. It says... We'll get back to this. Yeah, hold on to it right there and we'll get right back to that in a moment. Once again, this is the Saturday edition of The Cutting Edge, and we'll be right back. Could a strange substance found by a Southwest Arkansas man be part of a government test? Well, that's the question at the heart of a phenomenon called chemtrails, now getting widespread attention. Well, tonight, KSLA News 12 investigation reporter Jeff Farrell shows us the results of testing we had done about what's in our skies. Uh, it seemed like some mornings it was just crisscrossing the whole sky. They were just, it was just like a giant checkerboard. Bill Nichols snapped several photos of the strange clouds from his home in Stamps, Arkansas. They begin as normal contrails from a jet engine, but do not fade away like a normal contrail. Soon after, he saw particles in the air. You know, because we'd see it dropped it to the ground in a haze. Nichols then noticed the material collecting on the ground. This is uh, water and stuff that I collected in bowls. I had it set out in my backyard on my dad's pickup truck. KSLA News 12 had the sample tested at a lab. The results? A high level of barium, 6.8 parts per million, more than three times the toxic level set by the EPA. Armed with these lab results about the high levels of barium found in our sample, we decided to contact the Louisiana Department of Environmental Quality. They told us that yes, these levels are very unusual, but at the same time they added the caveat that proving the source is a whole nother matter. Barium is a hallmark of other chemtrail testing, which even attracted attention from a Los Angeles TV station. There's already no shortage of unclassified weather modification programs by the government. But those who fear chemtrails could be secret biological or chemical testing on the public point to the 1977 Senate hearings in particular, which confirmed 239 populated areas had been contaminated with biological agents between 1949 and 1969. Later, the 1994 Rockefeller Report concluded hundreds of thousands of military personnel were also subjected to secret biological experiments over the last 60 years. But could secret testing be underway yet again? I'd rather it be something inert and benign, you know, something that's, you know, not causing any damage, but uh, I'd like to know what it is. KSLA News 12 discovered chemtrails are even mentioned by name in the initial draft of House Bill 2977 back in 2001 under the Space Preservation Act. But the military denies any such program exists. Jeff Farrell, KSLA News 12 reporting. And, you know, it turns out until nine years ago, the government had the right under U.S. law to conduct secret testing on the American public under specific conditions. Only a public outcry repealed part of that law, with some exceptions. Now, Jeff's report mentioned high levels of barium linked to those alleged chemtrails. We wanted to find out exactly what effects barium has on the body. Well, we spoke with Mark Ryan, the director of the Poison Control Center. Ryan tells KSLA News 12 that... Short-term exposure can lead to anything from stomach to chest pains. Long-term exposure causes blood pressure problems. Ryan addressed concerns by chemtrail researchers that barium could be meant to wear down a person's immune system. Anything that causes ill effects in the body long-term chronically is going to affect your, your ability to, uh, because it's just it's constantly working on the body. So from that aspect, yeah, that's a potential. Brian says he's conducted research on his own about secret government testing on the public, but he's still a bit skeptical about the uh, alleged chemtrails, at least at the moment, because the Poison Control Center has seen no calls about exposure to barium.